Welcome to session three. This week we'll be looking at the essential element of fitness. I love this week because we have not only the inspiration of Pastor Rick teaching us about our bodies being a temple of the Holy Spirit and some motivations behind why we should really take it up a notch in caring for our bodies, but we also have fitness expert Sean Foy. And during his time, he relays many motivational tips and techniques all around the theme of discovering movement you can enjoy. We don't want to try to rope you into a program that you're not going to like. We'd love you to try some incremental small changes as you just explore and maybe go out on a bike ride with the kids, a walk with a friend, try something new, a sport that you might like, or a, a hiking trail. Sean also has some tips and motivations and things that you can actually incorporate in small increments throughout your business day if you're in the working world. So with all these combinations of Rick and Sean, I think it's a really practical way to take it up a notch for all of us to grow in the area of fitness. So I hope you have a great time with your group and we'll see you soon. Uh, I graduated in 1976 from the USC and it was not too many years after that where I started the, all these all this contact and repetitive motions and hits and all started to take their toll. I have to wear leg braces, so finding an exercise program that worked well with those constraints has been a challenge. My greatest struggle with sticking with the Daniel plan was um, initially when I started doing uh, the boot camp. I would get sick during the workout. It was more than I was used to. I had to learn as an adult to be fit. I grew up very active and played sports and then there was a middle area in my adult life where I did nothing and met my wife and got fat and, and, uh, and, ha and at age 36 decided that it was time to be healthy. It's encouraged me to take walks at lunchtime on my break. I'll walk for two miles. I can eat my lunch at my desk and go for a walk. Why not? I have the energy now, right? Which gives me more energy. She actually challenged me to a race at, um, it was a trail race, right? Yeah, it was down in Crystal Cove. And there were, there were points when <laughs> I remember you looked at me yes. and you said, I don't think I can do this. I and I don't. said, yes, you can. <laughs> yes, and she and was she did. pulling me up the you hill. Know? And again, I, I've gone to orthopedic surgeons and acupuncturists and chiropractors galore. But this Daniel plan and what Elizabeth has done with the authentic therapeutic has made all the difference in the world. I mean, I'm, I'm actually functioning. I even went to a Zumba class on a Monday. I didn't go back there anymore because the male body doesn't quite work that way, but it was a lot of fun nonetheless. And I'm so happy that for my kids, they know from a very young age that that's just how you do it. You need to get outside and move, and you need to get outside and be active uh, because the fitness element is such an important part of all of this. Welcome back, everybody, to session three of the Daniel Plan. How are you all feeling? This week, we're going to learn about fitness how movement is vital to getting healthy and staying healthy. God made our bodies to move. Now, the Bible tells us that in preparing ourselves, uh, we have to purify our hearts and we have to sanctify our bodies. Now, what does that mean? First, I purify my heart by, by committing my thought life to God. And then I sanctify my body by dedicating my physical body to God's purpose for the life that I was meant to live. Now, why does God emphasize the physical? I mean, I can understand why he can say, uh, I want your heart to be clean, but why does he say, I want your body too, not just your heart. I want your body to be dedicated to me. Well, I'll tell you why. It's because you can't do anything on this earth without your body. Now, we all know we need exercise to keep our bodies working efficiently, but it may surprise you to know that the Bible has something to say about exercise and about self-discipline. For instance, in 1 Corinthians 9.27, it says this, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should do. Now, the Apostle Paul says that he is as disciplined as an athlete, running each step with purpose in order to win the race that God set before him. Now, I have to admit that I didn't pick up on this fitness aspect of the verse for a long, long time because I was born with an enormous amount of natural energy. So I never really paid any attention to my health. Honestly, I, I didn't care how I looked, so I became a purpose-driven eater. <laughs> but when we started the Daniel plan, I, I stood up at the church and, and said, folks, I need to repent. I said, you know, as your pastor, I've only gained two or three pounds a year, but I've been your pastor for 30 years and I need to lose 90 pounds. 
Now, I certainly haven't lost all that pounds yet, and I've had ups and downs and setbacks, and you move forward and then you move back, but I'm still on the way, and I'm committed to becoming as healthy as God wants me to be. And I want you to stay committed to this too. It's going to require a long-term commitment. This is not a short-term, six-week diet, take a pill, and you'll never have a problem again. In fact, it isn't even about a diet. It, 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 it isn't even about focusing on your health for three or four months or even a year. It's about developing a healthy lifestyle that includes the five factors I mentioned in the first session. A life of healthy choices that brings us together all of these different aspects of our lives, the spiritual, the physical, the emotional, the mental, and the relational. This is God's will for your life. Now, as we began to do the Daniel plan at Saddleback Church, I learned that the Bible has a lot more to say about your body than I realized. Let me just show you a couple of verses. Psalm 119.73 says this, You made my body, Lord. Now give me the sense to heed your laws. Romans 12.1 says, I urge you in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Did you hear that? Offering your body to God is an act of worship. It's a spiritual discipline. You say, Rick, is this really that important? The answer is, yes, it is. It's really that important. The Bible says we are to purify our hearts purify our hearts, get the sin out of our lives so God can use us, but we're also to sanctify our bodies. Here's another verse about physical health. Psalm 127, 2 says, it is senseless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night because God wants his loved ones to get their proper rest. You know, sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is go take a nap. Now, don't do it right now, <laughs> but, but you may need to take a nap. Here's an interesting fact. Did you know that one-third of Jesus' ministry dealt with health care? The Bible says in Matthew 4 that Jesus went into every village, listen, preaching, teaching, and healing. Preaching is, uh, is evangelism, teaching is education, and healing is health care. One-third of Jesus' ministry was helping people get physically healthy. That's called healing. One-third of his ministry. Because Jesus doesn't just care about getting your soul to heaven. He also cares about your mind and your body, your overall health. Now, I don't know how you feel about your body, but you're really, you've only got three or four options in response to your body. First, you can reject it, which a lot of people do. People say, I don't like my body. Give me another model. And they're always trying to, to change it or fix it or make it look different. And they, they treat their body like it's a mistake. That's not right. God created you just the way he wanted you to be. So don't reject it. The second approach to your body is you can neglect it, which is what most of us do. We just don't pay that much attention to our bodies. And, and you know, you can go to a third extreme and that's, uh, you can perfect it. You can become so narcissistic that it's all about glorifying your body and how great you look and your body actually becomes an idol. But God says, I don't want you to neglect your body. I don't want you to reject your body. And I don't want you to perfect your body. That's not what I put you on earth for. Instead, I want you to protect your body. I want you to protect your health. Why? Because God created your body and Jesus paid for your body and the Holy Spirit lives in your body. Now, we looked at this verse in our last session. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have received from God, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. You know, I want you to be healthier a year from today than you are right now. I want to be healthier a year from today than I am right now. So together, we're going to have to have uh, uh, some changes in our lives. And the reason I want you and me to be healthy is because it, it'll give us more energy to do the things God wants us to do. We'll be able to enjoy the thing God's, things God wants us to enjoy. See, right now, if God told some of you to do something, you couldn't do it because you don't have the energy to do it. You, you just flat out don't have the physical stamina and strength to do what God would ask you to do if he did. God says, I want you to get ready. I want you to prepare your mind, your body, and your soul to be used by me for my purposes. 
And how do I do that? Well, again, let's review. First, I purify my heart, and second, I sanctify my body. These are the two things that God will use to help me become healthy. God will use these as I set health goals and then I stick with them. And what motivates me to do this? My love for Jesus and my love for other people. The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. You should use these two motives to set your goals. Say, Lord, I want to get in shape because I want to give you a healthy body. And I want to get in shape because I, I love my family and I want to be here for them. When you love God and you love other people, then your motivation for being healthy changes. And God blesses those goals because they are blessable goals. God has not promised to bless you simply so that you look great. But God has promised to bless goals when you commit your body to him. That's the starting point. Now, for change to happen in any area of your life, whether you want it financial change or educational change or mental or relational or vocational change, it actually works best to begin with the physical. That's why I'm glad you're here studying the Daniel plan. Now, the other reason to start with your body is because the Bible says your body is the temple, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. God takes up residence in your life, in your body, when you say yes to Jesus Christ. When you study the Bible, you find out that here on earth, God has always had a dwelling place. First, it was called the tabernacle. And then it was called the temple. And now he is in you. God is not just president of your life. He's resident in your life. He puts his spirit in you. That means you are a temple. So caring for your body is actually an act of worship. You do it for the glory of God. Caring for your body is an act of stewardship. You might write that down. It's an act of stewardship. Stewardship is just the old English word for management. You see, remember that what you think you own is really on loan. You don't really own anything. It's all God's. God has loaned you your brain, your body, your friendships, your opportunities, everything in life. You didn't own anything before you were born, and you're not going to go own anything after you die. It's just on loan to you from God while God lets you live here on earth. The Bible says this in Ephesians 5.29. Nobody hates his own body, at least nobody in his own right mind, but, he, but everyone lovingly cares for it, just as Christ cares for his body, which is the church, the, the family of God. Did you hear that? God says we are to care for our bodies just like Christ cares for his body, the church. Caring for your body is an act of worship. So how, how should you care for your body? By keeping it in shape. That, that'd be a, a good start. That, uh, practicing discipline is another good way. Getting enough sleep is a good way. Being confident in how God made you. Committing my body to God. Setting goals on my love for God and my love for others. These are all ways that God says you can be a good steward of the body that God has entrusted to you. Now, in this session, we're going to hear from Sean Foy. Sean is a leading fitness expert and a member of my Daniel Plan Wellness faculty. And I'm excited for you to meet Sean and learn how easy it is for you to get moving, no matter how old or young you are, get moving to get healthy. But before we hear from Sean, uh, let me pray for you. Would you bow your heads? Father, I want to thank you that you gave us our bodies. And now I want you to pray this prayer in your heart. Dear God, I know that the body you gave me is on loan from you. And I know you want me to take care of it as an act of worship, as an act of stewardship. Help me to honor you by honoring my body. Teach me not to reject it and not to... Uh, neglect it, and not even to perfect it, but teach me to protect it the way you want me to. Lord, I need your power to do this. I want to learn your ways to health and fitness, and help me to focus on your word that I might have the power to become all that you mean for me to be. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to our section on fitness, where I'm here today with Sean Foy. He's an exercise physiologist and an amazing member of the Daniel Plan team. Welcome, Thank Sean. Thank you, Dee. Yeah, I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you. 
you know, people really want to know more about how to move and some practical um, motivational steps. I was just wondering, with the number of people that you've worked with, with your corporate fitness programs, your research that you've done at Stanford, give us a few motivating tips to keep us in the game in the whole area. Of well, yeah, you know, I think everyone knows that we need to exercise. I mean, that, mm -hmm. given if you were to ask 10 people, do you believe exercise is good for you? They're all, I mean, nine out of 10 will say, yes, they do. Mm -hmm. um, bottom line is that we have to find the exercise that we enjoy, mm -hmm. the things that we love. Um, what's gonna make you laugh? What's gonna make you get up in the morning and say, I wanna go do that. Mm -hmm. Over the 20, 25 years of doing this in the corporate world and exercise physiology and studying and researching, we're finding that when you can identify with what you really like, mm -hmm. you're much more apt to do it. So we're excited about the Daniel Plan and how we can help people find that joy nice. in moving. Great. I have heard you say, um, what is the very best exercise around? And what's your response? <laughs> so if you want to lose weight, if you want to increase your energy, if you want to <laughs> look and feel 10 or 20 years younger, mm -hmm. um, really the best exercise that will help you do that is the one that you'll do. Bottom line, anything that involves movement, anything that gets you going, whether it's aerobic activity, resistance training, mm -hmm. even research is pointing out that performing simple movements at your desk, hmm. standing and performing 15 to 30 seconds of stretching activities hmm. can significantly improve your health. Wow. So even just some little breaks throughout the day little is a great breaks. way to get started. Yeah. And you know what's interesting? If you study the book of Daniel, hmm. Daniel showed us in his prayer life and that he was at least three times a day, if not more, we know three times a day, structured time throughout his day to connect with God. Hmm. We have discovered the same thing when it comes to combating sitting disease, hmm. that when we sit for too long, we're literally destroying our health. So through the Daniel Plan, we're gonna show folks how to get up and move just for a few seconds, just for a few minutes at a time during your day, non-sweat, and it's gonna significantly improve your health and your fitness. That sounds great. I love that you tied it back to the story of Daniel. You know, Pastor Rick's real um, emphasis, uh, you know, the biblical inspiration of Daniel's story. You have coined a phrase, Daniel Strong, yes. as you've been writing our book and our curriculum. Tell me a little bit about Daniel Strong. Well, I uh, just am mesmerized by Daniel and the man that he was and uh, inspiring myself and I hope everyone else that he was a man after God's heart and you could see that in that he pursued excellence. Hmm. Uh, physically, emotionally, uh, relationally, and spiritually. And you could see that he was strong in all of these areas, but not for himself, hmm. but for the glory of God. And that's what I, I'm really seeing is becoming Daniel Strong, hmm. is that we're pursuing excellence to glorify God physically, emotionally, relationally, hmm. and spiritually. And Dee, can you imagine what God can do hmm. with individuals that are just devoting themselves to, to being Daniel Strong? I love that you said this. It's like our, our thing on fitness, you would think it's just about movement, but it's the heart behind the movement. Yeah. Because I think of the greatest commandment, love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, right. and love your neighbor as yourself. That really encapsulates really our goal with the Daniel Plan yeah. and having the five essentials that really ultimately we so much are desiring to grow in each of these areas and mm. bring all of ourselves before God. Yeah. Now for somebody that's just... Um, wanting to take up their fitness a notch or maybe just getting started, I'd love to hear some of the benefits because I've heard things about, um, you know, the area of sleep, the area of mood, especially in the area of mood because I think life is stressful. Can you tell me some specifics about how exercise can benefit in that yeah. area? Yeah, for myself personally, I began to see the dramatic impact, as you mentioned, hmm. on our <clears throat> emotional well-being. Hmm. Physical motion affects emotion. Wait, say that again. Physical motion, literally just moving. <clears throat> if you and I were just to take a deep breath, for example, inhale through through your nose and exhale through your mouth, just mm -hmm. by doing that, uh, a study at Rush University found, just by performing deep breathing movements, you literally can lower your blood pressure. But they've wow. also seen significant reduction in stress levels. They've mm -hmm. seen anxiety, worry, and depression impacted just by deep breathing let alone now if you couple that with some stretching movements wow. you not only increase um, blood circulation energy level but you're also improving mobility of joints so you're beginning to compound hmm. the benefits so when you when most people want to exercise because they want, would like to lose weight and that's great but if you think about if i move more i'm going to feel better yeah I'm going to smile more. On a I, number of fronts, you're oh going to feel gosh, better. Oh my gosh, right? you're going to think differently. You're actually going to, you're going to actually create new brain cells to where your memory is improved. So mm -hmm. if you want to be smarter, exercise actually helps you with that too. Mm -hmm. So literally, if you were to think about exercise as a medicine, mm -hmm. um, we all should be taking it. 
Hmm. So what we hope with the Daniel plan is that we've we've shared some 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 cool concepts I think that will help people to get moving mm -hmm. to where we can take that I know I should to where I really want to do this and that's our goal. Oh, that's fantastic. I just feel um, exercise has meant so much to me in my life and when I have seen um, I guess just when some of the stressful days have come, it has um, given back in so many areas, not just in my physical fitness, but in my emotional well-being, um, all of that. And I feel like for those of you, you know, starting an exercise program, it's very motivating to realize, as Sean has shared, that it can, it, you know, you can bring so much encouragement in your spiritual life, in your emotional life, in your health, and just feeling better. So my encouragement to you is as you're beginning this program, there's plenty of tips that Sean has shared, but the benefits are just absolutely phenomenal about just taking a step and moving in that direction. You don't have to be perfect. You know, this is not about perfection any of the Daniel Plan. It's just about progress. So yeah. I just love it if you are a star athlete to keep it up and if you're just putting your toe in the water to take that step because the benefits are just phenomenal that we've seen achieved not only in our own lives but mm -hmm. in thousands of people that we've worked with. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, we um, really encourage journal writing. We have an app, we have a book that's a journal. Tell me some of the benefits about really just staying in the game as far as doing a little bit of tracking in this process. Well, when, when it comes to fitness, there's no question. Uh, identifying your weaknesses and your strengths is very important. And then following a prescribed program like we put in the Daniel Plan book itself. Mm -hmm. But monitoring and tracking, and one, one tip I would share with our, our viewers is that if you can schedule your activity before it happens, it's very mm -hmm. beneficial. Mm -hmm. For example, for myself, every Sunday evening, I'm either on my phone or on my computer or literally writing it down on a calendar of the days I'm planning on doing my activity. So I schedule mm -hmm. it like an appointment. So I would encourage you, schedule it before the week begins, mm -hmm. and then also, as the week is progressing, check that box. Give yourself a pat on the back. Um, and one other tip, Dee, I think that would be very helpful, get a buddy. <laughs> Get yeah, someone working out with you. There, <laughs> no question for myself personally, um, playing college football and professional football, it was great. I loved it, but I had a team. Yes. And I was pushed and I had a coach. When that went away, it's hard. It was tough. It's structure, yeah. it, there was no game to go to, there was <laughs> really no event. Mm -hmm. I think there are many, many guys, many gals out there that are. Um, looking for that structure of a team. I feel like that's so important for myself and it's really mm -hmm. helped me. I would encourage our viewers and anyone else that's thinking about getting back into fitness, get at least one buddy, at mm -hmm. least one buddy. And research also shows having a dog, getting a dog benefits <laughs> your fitness, believe it or not. You're gonna walk more. A research study at Indiana University discovered that, uh, believe it or not, having a dog, you're gonna walk more. Oh my gosh, because I just want you to know, Cooper is like one of my best friends in life. <laughs> and I have, a, it's, he's a hundred pound golden retriever. Uh, and we go on the, the trails all the time. I, I yeah. adore hiking, yep. I adore running, and Cooper adores it even more than I do. Yep. You know, I, as soon as I put my tennis on in the morning, it's like <laughs> he's up and down the stairs yeah. wagging that tail. Yeah. But it is fun. You know, obviously the dog is fantastic. Um, having some great friends, you know, makes it, oh. you know, all the more. We have classes at Saddleback that are group fitness classes, mm -hmm. or sometimes people just, at lunch, there's some people that are walking together, morning people around the lake. It's really just budding up and staying in this for the long haul, whether it's in the area of food, fitness, yeah. growing spiritually, it makes a big difference. Look at Daniel. Great example of when he was in his, probably his darkest moment, he ran to his friends. Pray for me. I need your help. Mm -hmm. And I think when it comes to fitness, we need to really admit that um, it doesn't matter how fit you are, having a buddy, having someone that can help mm -hmm. encourage you, support you, keep you accountable to do the things you know are best for you, we all need that. Mm -hmm. We all need that, no question. As yeah. you're going along this study this week, you'll have um, plenty of tips from Sean in writing in your curriculum. Thank you so much, hope it's a great week.